Imagine the universe within you, a vast network of rivers carrying life. This is your bloodstream, a vital fluid, precious and irreplaceable. For millennia, humanity has understood its importance. When this river is breached, when blood is lost, life itself ebbs away. Accidents, surgeries, childbirth, disease, all can lead to this critical loss. The quest to replenish this vital fluid is as old as medicine itself. Yet, the challenge has always been immense. The universe within is complex and its river of life is not easily mimicked or replaced. For centuries the only answer was transfusion, borrowing life from another, a noble act, a gift. But it's a solution fraught with complexities. Blood types must match. A mismatch in the body this intricate biological machine rebels. The immune system designed to protect turns attacker. Then there's the challenge of supply. Blood is perishable, it cannot be manufactured on a whim, it relies on the generosity of donors. In times of great need, disasters, or for those with rare blood, the supply often falls short. Now imagine a world where these limitations begin to fade. Picture a future where the anxiety of finding a matching blood donor diminishes. Envision a scenario where, in the most critical moments, a life-saving fluid is readily available, compatible with everyone. This isn't science fiction. This is the promise held by a remarkable breakthrough, emerging from dedicated research in Japan. Scientists are on the cusp of turning this long-held dream into a tangible reality. They are crafting artificial blood. The world of medical science is one of patient incremental steps. Years, sometimes decades, of meticulous research yield small advances. But then, there are moments that feel like a giant leap. Earlier this year in 2025 such a moment arrived. From the esteemed halls of Nara Medical University in Japan, an announcement echoed across the globe. A team of dedicated researchers after relentless pursuit declared a significant breakthrough, the development of a highly effective universal artificial blood. This wasn't just another minor improvement in blood substitute technology, this was different. This was a comprehensive solution capable of mimicking key functions of human blood without the need for blood type matching. The announcement itself was delivered with a blend of scientific precision and palpable excitement. Imagine the scene, a packed auditorium, journalists, scientists, and medical professionals leaning in, eager to hear the details. The lead researchers presented their findings, data illuminating screens, showcasing the properties of their creation. They spoke of artificial red blood cells efficiently carrying oxygen, they described synthetic platelets capable of initiating clotting. So what exactly is this universal artificial blood? It's far more than just a red-colored saline drip. Think of it as a highly sophisticated bioengineered marvel. To understand its creation, we first need to remember what our natural blood does. Our blood is a bustling metropolis of specialized cells and proteins. Red blood cells are the oxygen couriers, tirelessly delivering this vital gas to every corner of our body. White blood cells are our immune defenders. And platelets? They are the emergency repair crew, rushing to seal any breaches in our vascular highways. Creating an artificial substitute means replicating these critical functions, safely and effectively. The scientists at Nara Medical University, and indeed others in this field, have focused on the most urgent roles of blood in emergency situations, oxygen delivery and clotting. Their artificial blood typically involves two key types of engineered components. First, there are the oxygen carriers. Let's delve deeper into the microscopic heroes of this artificial blood. The artificial red blood cell substitutes are the workhorses of oxygen delivery. Imagine tiny, engineered spheres or sacs, far smaller than natural red blood cells, but packed with the power to carry oxygen. Researchers have explored various designs. Some use modified hemoglobin, the very protein that gives our blood its red color and oxygen-carrying ability. This hemoglobin might be sourced, purified, and then altered to enhance its stability and reduce toxicity outside a natural red cell. The goal is to ensure these artificial carriers release oxygen appropriately in tissues that need it most, and not prematurely, in the bloodstream. Their longevity and circulation is also a critical factor, needing to last long enough to be effective but not so long as to cause unforeseen issues. Then we have the artificial platelets. In our bodies, platelets are tiny cell fragments that spring into action when a blood vessel is damaged. Section 5. Beyond Blood Types – The Advantages of Artificiality the most immediate and celebrated advantage of universal artificial blood is right there in its name, universality. 
Think of the chaos in an emergency room when a trauma patient arrives, bleeding profusely. Every second counts. Currently, medical staff must quickly determine the patient's blood type before a transfusion can begin. If the wrong type is given, the consequences can be fatal. Universal artificial blood eliminates this critical, time-consuming step. It can be administered immediately, by paramedics at an accident scene, by medics on a battlefield, or by doctors in an emergency department, buying precious minutes that can mean the difference between life and death. This speed is revolutionary. Beyond speed, there's the monumental benefit of enhanced safety regarding infections. While blood banks worldwide meticulously screen donated blood, there's always a minuscule albeit shrinking risk of transmitting infections like HIV, hepatitis B and C, or other blood-borne pathogens. This is because there can be a window period where a newly infected donor might test negative but still be infectious. Artificial blood being a manufactured product can be produced under completely sterile conditions. Section 6. A Global Race the quest for synthetic blood. The dream of creating artificial blood is not a new one, nor is Japan the sole contender in this vital quest. For over a century, scientists have grappled with this challenge driven by the universal need to save lives lost to hemorrhage. Early attempts were often rudimentary, sometimes even dangerous, involving simple saline solutions or even milk transfusions in desperate times. The 20th century saw more focused efforts, particularly spurred by wartime needs, leading to the development of plasma expanders and the first generation of oxygen carriers. However, these early substitutes were often plagued by issues like short half-lives in the bloodstream, insufficient oxygen delivery, or severe side effects such as kidney damage or hypertension. It's a field marked by both brilliant insights and frustrating setbacks. Today, research groups across the globe, from North America to Europe and Asia, are actively pursuing various strategies to create safe and effective blood substitutes. Some are focusing on hemoglobin-based oxygen carriers, trying to perfect the modification and encapsulation of hemoglobin to make it safe and efficient. Others are exploring perfluorocarbons, entirely synthetic compounds that can dissolve large amounts of oxygen. Section 7. Hurdles on the Horizon, Challenges and Clinical Trials Despite the immense excitement surrounding breakthroughs like the one from NARA Medical University, the journey from a promising laboratory discovery to a widely available medical treatment is a long and arduous one. The first and most critical hurdle is ensuring safety. The human body is an incredibly complex system and introducing any artificial substance, especially one designed to mimic something as vital as blood, requires exhaustive testing. Clinical trials, conducted in carefully controlled phases, are essential. Phase 1. Trials assess safety in a small group of healthy volunteers. Phase 2 trials evaluate efficacy and further assess safety in patients. Phase 3 trials involve large-scale testing in diverse patient populations to confirm benefits and monitor for any adverse effects. Section 8. Lifelines Extended. Impact on Emergencies and Remote Care. Imagine the golden hour, that critical window after a traumatic injury where prompt medical intervention can mean the difference between life and death. Now picture a paramedic arriving at a chaotic accident scene. Instead of waiting for hospital transport and blood typing, they can immediately administer universal artificial blood. This fluid, stable and ready, begins replenishing lost volume and delivering vital oxygen straight away. This isn't just a marginal improvement, it's a paradigm shift in pre-hospital trauma care. Ambulances, emergency helicopters, and first responders in disaster zones could carry this lifeline, dramatically increasing survival rates for victims of accidents, natural disasters, or violent incidents. The seconds and minutes saved translate directly into lives preserved. The implications for military medicine are equally profound. Soldiers wounded in combat often face extreme conditions, far from established medical facilities. Evacuation can be delayed, and the logistical challenges of supplying fresh, type-matched blood to a battlefield are immense. Artificial blood with its long shelf life, portability and universal compatibility could revolutionize battlefield medicine. Section 9. The Future Flowing Reshaping Healthcare Forever the development of universal artificial blood, as exemplified by the recent strides from NARA Medical University, is not merely an incremental improvement in transfusion medicine. It stands as a potential cornerstone for a profound transformation of healthcare as we know it. We are looking at a future where the specter of blood shortages, 
the frantic search for compatible donors, and the risk of transfusion-transmitted diseases could be significantly diminished, perhaps even eradicated. This innovation has the power to rewrite medical protocols, enhance patient safety, and extend the reach of life-saving care to every corner of our planet. It's a testament to our relentless pursuit of knowledge and our capacity to engineer solutions to nature's most profound challenges. The impact will ripple through nearly every branch of medicine. Consider elective surgeries. Currently, hospitals must maintain adequate supplies of various blood types, anticipating surgical needs. This often involves complex logistics and a reliance on voluntary donations.